Hi, welcome back to track two. I'm with Ramon Navarro-Bosch, who is the CTO of Iskra. He's going to talk to us about Guillotina and the data layer, so Flaps DB, which is also a storage layer, and some more information about Flaps. Uh, Ramon is a longtime member of the Plum Foundation and all around great guy. He's also the co-author of Guillotina. So Ramon, whenever you're ready, take it away. Thank you so much, Andy. Well, first, welcome everybody. Um, here, I'm mostly as a CTO of Flaps. That's uh, my new company and super amazing project. And well, I'm going to start uh, to, ex to explain an history from like a dream history that I, we, I've been kind of pursuing for the last years. And that finally, I think uh, I'm, I'm, on, I'm like on a dream right now. So in order to explain this, I need to go from where we started Bilutina to where, we, where I am now. And the end of his, the history, so the, it's going to talk about building an AI power search engine for an structured data. But first, let's start with Bilutina. Yeah. Much. Yeah, we Guillotina was born in 2017 and was born with Nathan that we were trying to build a more scalable uh, framework than was blown back then and so because we were dealing with the problem of needing to store thousands of millions of objects and needing to search on them. So we needed to build something more reliable, more scalable. And that it's also backed by a NetSQL database, so it's easier for operations to, to scale up. So we, we made, we developed Pilutina based on the designs of Clone and so, and then we decided to push it to the production up to the maximum kind of uh, speed as possible. In this path, we needed to develop a lot of add-ons and Neil just explained some of them, like the Elasticsearch one, which provides the option to serialize into Elasticsearch a lot of search uh, information and provide really fast results with keyword search and BM25 search. Then the file storage, pops up, cache distribution. I think that the cache, cache implementation on Bilutin is super cool and provides super uh, scalability, a nice scalability history. Even we have a, a simple user database, so clone people could map the user API and registration. That was 2019. Okay, on 2020, we decided to um, implement the ASGI framework to follow the ASGI protocol, LDAP. We, we know that a lot of people love LDAP. So we decided to, to implement that, that plugin, Stripe that also Neil explained it and a lot of other plugins to provide easy to use integrations onto Bilutina. And nowadays we are 2021, we have version 6.4.0 release candidate on, on, onto, the, onto PyPy already. And we, we are, I'm so happy because we are already on the front end working with um, Bilutina React to do easy interfaces for Bilutina. And we are supporting Python 3.10 with the latest async uh, API. So super amazing evolution from Guillotina. And um, the result is what we have nowadays in the conference. Two trainings, two talks from new devs doing Guillotina on, on the conference. I'm super happy that five companies using it in productions with lots of usage and a really good feedback that I'm receiving from them. We have a long path to do with the front end. Eric is going to talk about it. Roger is going to talk about it. And I'm super happy to see all these front end histories on, on top of Guillotina. There is, there, we need to name interface, we need CMS, maybe with Google.io, maybe with Boto. We don't know. We want to grow the Guillotina framework team that we have right now. Right now, we are only two people uh, that are maintaining and doing meetings. If anybody wants to get involved and help on to contributing on to Bilutina core team, we are more than welcome to accept to, to, to welcome them onto, onto the meetings that we do every three or four weeks. And everybody's asking me, well, Bilutina is going to be blown, I, I don't know, nine back end. 
we don't know, and it's not our goal to be the clone backend. Um, we are super happy about what we have right now. It's useful to build uh, projects to develop fast APIs that are deployed with no time. And it's super, uh, we are really happy with what we have right now. We will become the backend for Plum, and Botox uh, wants to do an integration with Pilotina. That will be super awesome also. And it will be a, maybe a good history, but we will see in the future. So I've been talking about Villotina, but I also been kind of talking a lot during the last conferences about other things. I've explained it last year on the conference that uh, on 2018, there was a revolution on NLP and BERT was a model, a language model that kind of revolutioned the way that we are able to convert language onto vectors and being able to do semantic search on the information. Then in 2019, we did a spring, a Lutina spring on Toulouse. It was an amazing spring hosted by Eric. And I remember that we were there and we were saying, we need to have a better backend storage layer that supports full text search and that it's not elastic search because elastic search it's, it's a delegated uh, writing search experience that is super costly and it's super difficult to use. And then in 2020, I was kind of thinking on my, on, on my bones, there, I, I'm missing something. No, we need to build a cloud service that is designed for people who manage information, textual information or file information, that it's able to provide a state-of-the-art NLP search, democratizing the technology that nowadays it's only on Google and Facebook and these kind of companies that has the power to, to develop these models and to push these models into production. So that's why we decided to create Flaps. Flaps, it's our new brownie startup, uh, super amazing. Uh, and now I'm going to, sorry, to explain about a bit what's flaps, and then I'm going to justify why I'm explaining what's flaps here. Uh, flaps was created in order to do, to be an easy to use API to build AR powered search engines for unstructured data. That, what does it mean? It means that, for example, for clone can be a, a storage layer where you can store, even if you want your, your main data or if you want your indexing information and being able to provide with low code, with a web component that you plug in your system or an SDK, a way to guide your users into finding information instead of providing the standard keyword search experience that we, nowadays we are able, even if it's through Z catalog or if it's through Elasticsearch. So what do we do at Flaps? Flaps uh, understands whatever information you are pushing onto the system and converts this unstructured information onto searchable information. We ingest all kinds of data. So we ingest conversations uh, like a Slack conversations or Google chat conversations or whatever, files, URLs with information, a structure, semi-structured information like JSON XML. We convert the, all this information onto text, paragraphs, entities, summaries, thumbnails, previews, relations, and semantic vectors. It's a lot of uh, processing engine here, processing power. And then finally, we provide tools for ranking, tuning, and allowing to, to define if you have a specific rules or specific meanings that you want to push, specific concepts that you want to push in your research, which is the goal that everybody finds information that uh, all the clients of our products are able to build this information. So, <laughs> which is uh, the, the steps? Creating, extracting, uh, extracting data as a service. So we are able to extract a possible information from a file without the need of installing any kind of software on our systems, it just as, as a service, you push data and get everything gets extracted, providing a way that it's scalable to index and store this information, improve the search experience. We don't want that people does navigation. Oh, I really think that navigation is may give frustration because 
you are going through the tree, uh, maybe it's that path, maybe it's, you have a facet navigation and you need to search if it's this topic or this other topic. Finding information is a nightmare. And we want that, we really think that navigation, it's not the way you should use search. We are used to Google, but Google provides as a search uh, widget, which is super powerful and we find the information. So why we cannot have this power onto our internal or internet or own websites that is democratized so everybody can use it. For that, we need semantic search. That means finding information through vectors and finding information with multilingual. So you, you may be, your content maybe it's in English, but maybe you don't speak English properly to find what you're looking for. So the system needs to be able to, to uh, search information that it's in another language. And here it's where I really like it because I, I, lo I love open source, I love the open community. And I, I think that democratization of artificial intelligence, making it easy to use, uh, providing tools to people so people can use it and provide value to their clients is the key of what we are building right now. And finally, open source. Open source for me, it's, I've been open source, I think, all my life. And I really believe that it's the way to provide uh, value and to give clearness about what we are doing. And it also provides governance, what it means that you can have your own installation and own your own data and your own device or your own cloud without the need that anybody's controlling and making money with your, with your data. So finally, as a summary, I'm not going to be more commercial, I promise. Flaps is an end-to-end low-code API. It means that we want that everybody's focused on what they bring to value, the, the tool that they are building. They don't need to worry about if it's an inverted index, if we are storing a keyword, or we are doing a VM25. It needs to be easy and it needs to be end-to-end. -end. That can be integrated in minutes because it's not what, what, what we want to provide this value to you so you, you can push your value on top of that. And scalable. We, we have used cases that people has millions of documents and needs to have the same speed on answering that people who has 100 or 1,000 documents. And with data governance and open source is a core value on, on the system. So we can provide the storage of these documents. So in order to show you what I've been talking and explaining, we are going to do a really short demo about a UI. We develop it just for, for the purpose of, the, of, demo, of demoing what we are doing. We remember we are an API and we, uh, our goal is not to do the final product. It's that we provide tools. So everybody who needs to build something that it has uh, the need to find information can use that. For example, here you will see a PDF, uh, a 68 pages PDF with a lot of text that you push onto the API, this PDF. And the result of pushing onto the API, it's uh, an extraction of all the paragraphs that you have on the, on, the, on the document that we already make sure that it's as much as possible close to paragraph. So you can search for any concept on the paragraph. For example, we can search player and it gives us the paragraph that has the player meaning. Oh, that's cool. But we can also search Google, for example, and then we can find a paragraph that has both, uh, both words on, onto, the, onto, the, onto the sentence. That's quite easy. We can pick on it. And as we know the position of this paragraph, we can really see the paragraph on the system. This is all on the API that you, that all this information, it's on the API and you can see. It. We also uh, are able to extract all the possible locations that appears on all the text. So you can search for them and all the possible people on, the, on this API. Okay, uh, but this is not magic. This is just extracting all possible information. But once it's extracted, it's extracted, then you can search for something. Really imagine that we can search for the best football player in the world. And sorry for the fans of football club. Yeah, we know that yesterday Barcelona had also kind of a problem there, but uh, we, can see that, for example, our, our engine is able to understand that we are searching for Messi. And in English, here you can see that it's, it's providing us a semantic result saying that it's Messi what we're looking for. But it's not only in English. 
we can see another article that is written in Spanish that gives us the same kind of information because as vectors doesn't understand about which language are we talking, then we are able to search across languages on the same vectors. And this gives the information. But that's not only, up, only the end of the, the history. We can search about um, any term, for example, Revolución Francesa in Spanish, and we can find an, a piece of, the, of, uh, of a paragraph of a video that talks about Revolución Francesa in French, I mean in English. So you can click on, on the Revolution Francesa, you can see that paragraph, and you can go exactly to the second and the middle France. that and it's talking about Revolution Francesa. I'm not going to explain more about the, the product itself, it's just to see what our API is able, is able to do and what we are providing on, to, on top of this API. So you can build this experience on your own products, your own CMS, your own internet, or whatever you want that is going to be interesting. So we've been working hard to have this uh, system, and we developed uh, an architecture based on Guillotina. This is what we what you can do with Guillotina: build an easy MVP that it's super useful to show the power of what you are going to build. This architecture is super simple. It just has guillotine in the middle, storing all information, all extracted information, everything that you've seen seeing, and providing just an, ex an index uh, that it has a lot of semantic um, machine learning inside, a training system to train the models, and a processing engine that is able to understand everything. This system that it's what you've seen now, it's built on top of Guillotina, and Guillotina provided us the opportunity to build fast and to deploy fast and to deliver value super fast. And that is one of the key values of Guillotina. But what happened is that we are growing as all the companies. And now we are moving to a different architecture where we have much more um, um, options to, to scale the team that we have. So everybody has more responsibilities. Let me just check on the time. Okay. So I'm going to explain you a bit which is the architecture of Flaps, the, 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 final, the final version. First, in one side, we have a processing API, an API where you can send files, you can send any kind of information, and you can push all possible um, connectors uh, through uh, an electron application that's called Flaps Desktop, where you can connect to Dropbox or any, any integration that you would like. It's an open source uh, electron application that we will be open sourcing by the beginning of next year. But you will be able to implement your own integration, I don't know, with Plone, uh, REST API, or with anything. Just connects to the, to the source downloads onto your system or pushes onto, onto Flaps API to process any kind of information. Besides this application that, as I said, it's, we are going to open source and it's an electron application, we will also offer an SDK and a REST API with full documentation how to use it on, on the API side. On the other side, this is where things come in, where we are going to search for information, we are also going to open source the, um, the rest of the, the SDK UI. The SDK UI is what you've seen on the demo. It's a widget, a web component written in Angular. Sorry, Timo, I know it's in Angular, it should be in React and Victor, but uh, we developed it on Angular because we, we I feel more comfortable with Angular, sorry. And so we developed this web component so it's easy to integrate onto any website and we can search for any information that it's stored on that on your bucket of information. So in one side we have the processing and ingesting information, on the other side we have the search, so we gather all this information. What's in the middle? So I'm going to open this box and first thing it's the extractor understanding. That means that we collect any piece of information of the file that may be useful, even from a metadata, from a text line, uh, a, a, an image that we are converting onto a vector, any piece of information that can be useful to find that information on the overall sea of all your information, it's going to be extracted and uh, 
um, prepared to be installed. And here is where I'm super proud to, to, to explain. We need to store this information in a way that we can able, be able to, to search later. And that's, we are what, what the key, the, the king of this, of this architecture is FlavsDB. FlavsDB is the database that we designed it to be an NLP database to store all this information, text, vectors, relations, paragraphs, previews, all the information that it's needed to provide this experience on search on a database that is transactional and it's scalable. And this database, we want to, we are working hard to open source it. It's not easy, but we plan to do it by the end of November, beginning of December this year. I was willing to have it by today, but it's been not possible. We are working really hard to make it possible. Uh, but we, we want to open source it because we really think that everybody has the, the option to store their information on their own system and integrate on their own open source applications is super important. And finally, the last uh, piece is the machine learning piece. Once you have everything stored, we need to get all this data again and create our models. Some of them are in TensorFlow JS, so they are able to run on the, on the, on the client without any need of having information on any server, like for example, query expansion, intent of detection, and a, a lot of other models like uh, labeling, ranking, that are that these ones need to be trained on, on, on our servers, and we're providing an API on top of that. So uh, in short words, what's FlavsDB? FlavsDB is the database that it's going to provide as a storage layer for an extracted data, open source, designed to be fast and scalable, and providing BM25, paragraph and vector information to, for being able to provide value on our own applications on top of that. So the design is quite simple. It ingests information through a gRPC API, uh, where you can send resources or query information. And it provides also a way to connect your streams of data with just stream of Kafka that we can provide transactionality. From the logic point of view, it's super simple. The database is uh, organized in knowledge boxes, that it's uh, blocks of uh, storage information. What in Plone could be maybe a Plone site uh, or in Guillotina a container. And you can store as much as resources as you want inside the knowledge box. And each of these resources has a different uh, kind of fields. Right now we are supporting keyword-based field, fields, text fields, link fields, file fields, layouts, and conversation fields. We aim to, to add more kind of files, fields on the, on the resource schema. And it's, as it's a dynamic schema, you can define at any resource to push more fields or less fields without needing to predefine the schema on each one of these resources. We are focusing on, this, on the fields that provide much more value to find that information in our system. For, for example, right now we are working hard on also adding the date uh, field so we can provide range queries onto the system. Internally, FlavsDB is designed with a bunch of subsystems that interconnect each other. On the, um, on the lower level, we have a blob storage that right now we support GCS and S3, and we aim to support uh, Azure file system also. Then we have our nodes. The nodes are the indexing uh, components that uh, allows us to store vectors, text, paragraphs, and relations in a scalable way through charts and distribution of data across all these nodes. Then we have the key value storage. Right now we're supporting the uh, Titan, Titan key value, a really nice Rust database and Redis. And the cache that we have memcache for, for storing uh, objects and Redis for the, for the pub set. On top of this architecture, we have a reader which reads super fast and does the merge of all the queries to provide ranking results on searching by paragraph, by semantic search, and by relations. And then we have all the ingestion, ingestion components. 
these components reads from the stream or reads from an API in order to provide serialize everything onto the proper places onto the underlying database. As you can see, is a mixture of Rust to provide fast results on query and Python in order to provide flexibility on the writing side. The API is quite simple and I'm not going to extend here. We are going to publish all the Swagger and Open API documentation plus the developer portal soon. So you can see it's super simple, creating a resource, updating and patching. It's not traversal. It's not traversal, I know. We decided not to make it traversal because knowledge boxes doesn't have security schema inside them. If you have access to knowledge box, you have access to everything that it's inside that knowledge box. We did that because ma machine learning models doesn't understand about security. And if you are training a model with all your data, that it's able to predict a, 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 a next word, you need that every, all the information that is stored on that model has the same security concept. So from the NLP concept, it's much more useful to provide knowledge box um, driven models than resource specific with security for each resource. So if you are planning to have something that each resource has a specific permission, then maybe the FlaxDB is not your, 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 your solution right now. But if you are aiming to create knowledge boxes for your teams, for your uh, company, for your internet, for your product or whatever, then it's the proper solution. And guillotina, I think it's been a long that I've you know, been talking about guillotina in this talk. So we remember that in 2019, we were at, at Toulouse Spring and we were saying, we need the guillotina object server. And I'm so happy because this fulfills exactly what we needed in guillotina to provide a storage layer on the bottom of guillotina to store everything and to store all the text information in a way that it's easy to be searched. So our roadmap right now, it's that we have already the MVP in Glutina. We are going to open source FlapsDB by November, by end of November. We want to open the cloud sign up by December and publish the Flaps desktop by the beginning of next year. And we are working hard also on machine learning to do anonymization and provide more machine learning amazing tools on top of that. So honest, if you like Flaps TV and you really want to, to be part of our community and you want to start, have early access onto the, the, the first versions that we are going to open source and uh, open the sign up, we have these nice t-shirts designed by Anna Bruges, our, our UI and UX uh, super master. And they are super nice. We have three flavors. So we are going to have um, a, a t-shirt like this for the, the first that uh, sign ups on our system. You have a QR here to access our, our sign up uh, registration for the Plum conference. And I think that's all if I'm not wrong. I, 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 I give time to take the picture to the QR. I will go back to them, just go to the next one. Yeah, it's really important. We are hiring, we are willing to grow really fast. So we need a lot of developers. We need Rust, Python developers, TypeScript developers. Uh, what's really important, as you can imagine, distributed system, observability, Kubernetes. We are a full remote company. We're organized in a squad and we have personal culture, our, our, our main culture, and we want to keep that because we are Catalans and we always be, will be Catalans. If you are interested, just send uh, a mail to careers at flaps.io. And I think that's now it, that's all. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's like, yeah. I think that that's all guys. I really hope that you enjoy it. Sorry for explaining too much things about flaps, but I think it's a super interesting. I'm super proud about what we've been able to, to get. And I'm super willing, I'm super interested I really want that to be able to open source it soon. It's a lot of work, but we are doing as fast as, as far as we can, as fast as we can. Thank you so much.